Hello everybody, it's me, it's Catherine from Jane Catherine on Books and it's time for a book haul, yay! So, I've got a few um, new purchases to show you and um, get into it straight away. So the first one is Soulmates by Holly Bourne. Now, I'll just have to read you this, it says Soulmates do exist but not as you think. Ever so often two people are born who are the perfect match for one another. Soulmates. But what if meeting your soulmate is earth shattering? Literally. Ooh. Now, I'm just going to do it a little bit different this time. I thought what I would do is just read the first page of every book that I'm showing you. Just to give you a bit more of a feel for it. I thought it would just make, make a change. Bring the changes. So they say. So soulmates wasn't something I had ever believed in. It was a Hollywood word, a notion created to sell romantic literature and movie rights. Love as I saw it was a worldwide obsession born out of desperate fantasy. People could call it love, romance, finding their soulmate and all that other nonsense. But in my mind, it was just hormones, biology, chemistry, dressed up in some happy ever after, self-created delusion born out of fear of being alone. Of course, you're always a cynic before you fall in love yourself. The problem is Hollywood, Stephanie Meyer, Mills and Boone, they got it right, soulmates do exist. But what they fail to understand is that finding them isn't always a good thing. Like the sound of that one, soulmates Holly Bourne. So next, I've got Cold Granite by Stuart McGra McGride, McBride. Uh, this has been sent to me by lovely Kerry Ann uh, from Woman vs Books and every month we do a book swap for each other. Uh, it's getting really exciting. We, I look forward to it. Uh, I'm sure Kerry Ann does as well. And uh, I also do one with Melanie from Mel's Bookland Adventures and uh, uh, Mel and myself swap as well. And uh, it's great because we've all got different tastes and, uh, and you know, we're trying books we've never done before. So I've never read any Stuart McBride. I understand that this is a real favourite of Kerry Ann's and it's set in Aberdeen where she comes from. So it's her hometown. And this is, um, we're looking at a series with DS Logan McRae. Um, so yeah, we are looking at a... Um, a murder and oh yes and tonight um this is probably in the uk and we're saturday tonight they are rerunning and i'm so excited they're rerunning the very first series of taggart set in scotland and it's taggart where i get you know i've got this bit of a thing where i go oh there's bill on Monday. Well, that's from Taggart. So I'm, I'm really excited to be watching that from the very beginning. Um, I'm going to see if we can find it on Booktube or something so I can I put a link out for everyone that's not in the UK. But if I can get a bit of a snippet of him going, oh, there's been a mother, you might not realise, something realise. You might think, oh, actually, Catherine's not, not going soft in the end. <laughs> Somebody does say that. Uh, so anyway, I digress. Next, now I've got a set of three here by uh, the author called, oh, just cut my nails, I've only just this minute put some nail varnish on and it's not set, oh, it's so annoying when that happens, and then you smudge it, um, Dodie Smith, and I've not come across Dodie Smith before, uh, but um, these next lot of books I've got from the book people and they often do some bargains with sets so this um, the first one is it lives whoop, sorry, I'm dropping it it ends with revelations the new moon and the old and the town in bloom and from what I can gather get them out of the way so I'll get my next books out. What I can gather with a lot of these, they're mainly uh, in the 1920s and there seems to be a bit of a theme of theatre land going through them. Um, I, I think there's a little bit of family family drama going on there from what I can, uh, um, can uh, see. And The New Man with the Old, that's set in the 60s. So um, they're all slightly different um, but I thought I'd give them a try. 
Um, unfortunately, they don't. They don't seem to have got too many uh, good reviews on Goodreads. I've had a look on there. Uh, it's a bit love them or hate them, but uh, they. I don't know if they were three for a fiver or something like that. And I thought they looked interesting, so it doesn't hurt to give them a go for that price, does it? And then I can pass them along to the charity shop or whatever. So that's those. Then the next two are the books that are being published by our very own Jen Campbell. Jen Campbell is a, a, a fellow booktuber. Uh, if you haven't found a channel, uh, you need to go and check it out. She's she's a lovely lady. She's got a wealth of knowledge about all things bookish. And uh, yeah, these are two of her um, books that she's had published. So weird things that people say in bookstores and more weird things that people say in bookstores and uh yeah love the covers really like the covers and they're full of wacky things real life stories i think because she was a bookseller uh so looking forward to get i've been wanting those for a while because you, you need to support other booktube authors i don't know why i'm saying other because i'm not a booktube author myself but you know what i mean so then i've got another set of three and these have got lovely you can see got lovely purple uh end spines to them and this is these are three by barbara barbara Cleveley. now i don't know barbara i can't talk barbara barbara Cleveley. i don't know her work at all so again this is um a new author for me a new set and um it's it's sorry i've got an itchy nose again this is set of three in the Joe Sanderland series and it's the first three. So I'm really pleased that I managed to get the first three because often you can get some really good bargains from the book people. But you don't often get the first three. You usually get them seven, eight and nine and you think, oh goodness me, I've got to wait or whatever. So we've got, I'll go in order. We've got the last Kashmiri Rose. We've got Ragtime in Simla. And we've got the Damascened, 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 that seems a funny strange word, Damascened Blade. Um, and these are all uh, set in uh, roughly around the 1920s in India, in the days of the Raj. And that's, that's a, a period that, of history that I'm really interested in. I like reading a lot of the books based uh, in the Indian continent and the days of the Raj and how everybody was treated and you know and just the whole atmosphere of you know the colonials and the ladies who lunch and going out partying while the husbands are you know doing their diplomatic thing so I'm looking forward to those three I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I've put much about that oh and the Dema uh, and uh, in the Damas and Blade we're being trans transported to the northwest frontier Ah, not the uh, frontier of uh, what's it? Star Trek fame. No, that wasn't the Northwest Frontier. Was the Northwest Frontier something to do with cowboys and Indians? <laughs> David shaking, David shaking his head at me as if to say, "Silly woman, what what is the Northwest Frontier then?" India. Oh, it's still in India. No, oh, woman. Yeah. Yeah. What am I thinking of then? Uh, North by Northwest. <laughs> Gregory Peck, was it? Cary Grant. Well, before my time, darling, that one. <laughs> Cary Grant, even. <laughs> sorry, sorry. There we go. Next. I've got three by Maeve Binchy. Now I'm going to read a little bit first pages of these ones. Now, for those of you who. Uh, like family dramas I'm trying to think of uh, who I could relate it to at the moment Maggie O'Farrell Maggie O'Farrell that style of writing um, she does quite quite uh, a few that are family drama type situations and uh, sort of going back in the day as well when around May Bin she was really at a height and really popular I mean she still is but bless her way she passed away now but um, such as Rosamond Pilcher you know if you like those sorts and I know especially the lovely Kate Kate Howe she that's I think how we first got talking because we're both great 
for Rosamond Pilcher fans. So I think if you like those um, authors, you would really enjoy May Finchy. I've read them all and uh, I have them all. And if you remember, or those of you that are new won't, won't know that uh, I had a very large selection of books and then I once moved house, I don't know, 15 years ago and got rid of them all to charity shop and I wish I hadn't. Um, so I'm now recollecting them all. <laughs> So um, I've got three here that came in a, another set. As I say, it's great to get these sets. I'm going to reread all hers. But the first one, A Week in Winter. And it says the she dear sisters had lived in Stone House for as long as anyone could remember. Set high on the cliffs of the west coast of Ireland overlooking the windswept Atlantic Ocean, it was falling into disrepair until one woman with a past she needed to forget breathed new light into the place. So I'm just going to read the first chapter, first chapter, first page. Everyone had their own job to do on the Ryan's farm in Stony Bridge. The boys helped their father in the fields, mending fences, bringing the cows back to be milked, digging drills of potatoes. Mary fed the calves, Kathleen baked the bread and Geraldine did the hens. Not that they ever called her Geraldine, she was chicky. As far back as anyone could remember, a serious little girl pouring out meal for the baby chickens or collecting the fresh eggs each day sometimes saying chuk 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 smoothly into the feathers as she worked chicky had names for all the hens and no one could tell her one had been taken to provide a sunday lunch they always pretended it was a shop chicken but chicky always knew smart girl so that's that one finding frankie these are lovely new covers. They've been re-released with, with uh, new covers. Baby Frankie is born into an unusual family. Her mother is desperate to find someone to take care of her child and she doesn't have much time. Noel doesn't seem to be the most promising of fathers, but despite everything, he could well be Frankie's best hope. As for Lisa, she is prepared to give up everything for the man she loves. Surely he's going to love her back. And Moira is having none of it. She knows what's right and has the power to change the course of Frankie's life. But Moira is holding secrets of her own. So let's have a look how this sort of fares out. Kate Fingless was coming to the end of a tiring day in the salon. Everything bad that could happen had... Whoo, it's windy. Everything the bad that could happen had happened. A woman had not told them about an allergy and had come out with lumps and a rash on her forehead. Oh dear. A bride's mother had thrown a tantrum and said that she looked like a laughing stock. A man who had wanted streaks of blonde in his hair became ap apoplectic when halfway through the process he had inquired how much they would cost. Katie's husband Gary had placed both his hands innocently on the shoulders of a 60 year old female client who had told him that she was going to sue him for sexual harassment and assault. She looked at the man standing opposite her, a big priest with sandy hair mixed with grey. You're Katie Finglass, and I gather you run this establishment. Sorry, I can't do an Irish accent, it'd be rubbish. The priest said, looking around the innocent salon nervously as if it were a high-class brothel. <laughs> That's right, Father, Katie said with a sigh. What could be happening now? It's just that I was talking to some of the girls who work here down at the centre on the quays, you know, and they were telling me dot, dot, dot. And so the last one is Chestnut Street. Lovely, uh, uh, another lovely cover and just around the corner from St Jarlath's Crescent featuring in mind in Frankie in Chestnut Street here the lives of the residents are revealed in Maeve Binch's wonderful collection of stories now this I liked this because of it being a short story collection and uh, I've not actually seen any of uh, Maeve Binch's short story collections and I thought it'd be nice when I do a, a Friday's read short story recommendations it'd be good for that and uh, yeah I'm just looking through the backlist um, oof, very prolific writer in a time may have been she and uh, they've got a real not saying they've all got a good feel because sometimes you know the plots are quite can be quite um, real life you know real life shit happens doesn't it so good writer though very good writer so i'm looking forward to them i'm going to get back on track with Maeve and then finally we've got 
kind of cruel. See that? And this is by Sophie Hannah. Uh, it says, Some secrets are so dark you keep them even to yourself. Now then, um, what was I looking at this? Yes, I looked, I looked this up. I mean, I think it was really inexpensive, a fiver or something, for a good hardback. Something that I like the sound of the blurb. And look at this. Oh, that's scary in itself. Somebody breaking into a house. Ooh. And um, I thought, well, yeah, that's a bargain. And then when I looked into it, it turns out that this is book seven. You see what I was saying earlier about it gets really annoying when you, you think you're getting book one and you end up with six or seven or eight. Uh, and this is uh, of the Spilling CID series. And uh, so I'm going to have to wait a bit. I'm not sure whether this would stand as a standalone. Uh, but it says Amber knows more than she's telling. She knows that she hasn't slept since the arson attack which killed her best friend. Oh dear. Oh, if it's not going to be too nasty, don't like them when they're too nasty. She knows that it's not normal for four members of your family to disappear one Christmas morning and then reappear the next day, refusing to explain or ever speak of it again. She knows that somewhere buried deep in her subconscious is the key to what happened all those years ago at Little Orchard. Kind, cruel, kind of cruel, these words she keeps coming back to. And what do they mean? So, yeah, the blurb, it, it sounds really exciting. I don't know whether it's... Uh, I might start it and have a, a go at it and see, you know, whether I get the feeling that, uh, you know, too much that's gone on in the past you need to know about to be able to enjoy this. Uh, but anyway, it was a good buy and uh, it'll have to wait and, uh, you know, collect the others. So, kind of cruel. Have I not got anything else left in the little box of tricks? No. I thought I had more than that. No, it's empty. It's empty. I hope you've enjoyed that. I uh, hope there's a few titles there that you like the look of. Uh, let me know in the, uh, the comments down below if you read any of these or you'd like to uh, get these now and, uh, and see what you think, the same as me. I think the Maeve Binches are ones that uh, I'll be getting to first. I'm, uh, I might uh, I might start them next. We'll see. I've got quite a few buddyathon buddyathons. I'm, calling it, I'm getting cracked now with buddyathon. A few buddy reads and various book club things going on. Um, not done a library book haul for a while. Um, they haven't had. There's been uh, a bit of a. Uh, can we say they've not been buying too many new books at the moment because there's been a bit of a cloud hanging over the library and I think they've just been a bit careful and not to be spending so quite a few of the books I've wanted to read they've not had in the library uh, but that doesn't mean that I've uh, you know I've forsaken them hopefully um, we'll get back and uh, give you a library book haul again soon like we've had in the past so thank you for joining me uh, it's getting a bit breezy now but that's lovely not too hot for filming and thanks for joining me um, yeah bye for now mm -hmm.